Thanks so much for visiting Teen and Buddy on YouTube. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. Hello and welcome to the Tea and a Butty podcast with me, Dominic. And me, Erica. Today we're going to be talking about Liverpool. Yay! Oh yeah, fab and gear, Liverpool. <laughs> yeah, you know. I did lot about the Beatles. Liverpool for Beatles fans. For Beatles yeah. fans, yeah. <laughs> in case you don't know, in case you've stumbled upon us by accident, we're huge Beatles fans. We are huge <laughs> Beatles fans and... Uh, the podcasts we used to do before we got T and a Buddy going were about the Beatles exclusively, mm-hmm. so yep. uh, this one's no different. This episode's no different. It's exclusively <laughs> yeah. about the Beatles. Yeah. Um, so if you're not a fan, we do apologize, but hopefully maybe you'll hear something that might interest you. And Yeah, because, I mean, the story is very interesting. Well, if you're interested in history at all. Historical. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Liverpool so. is a very historical city anyway, without yep. the Beatles' influence. Mm-hmm. I mean, nowadays it's like, yeah, you know, because, I mean, there's that old joke that goes around the UK. It's like, oh, Liverpool, that's all they ever bang on about is the Beatles. With uh, all that, you know? Yeah. And, I mean, it's pretty, it's a pretty cool thing to have, you know, like yeah. to have the world's greatest band. Yeah, that's yeah, there, yeah, yeah. Um, one of the main reasons we decided to go ahead with this podcast, though, knowing that maybe you know, not all of our audience might be into the Beatles is because we do have enough um, Beatle people (laughs) who have, like, asked us questions over time, you know. Yeah, because we've done the tours and everything. We've been to Liverpool several times and, you know. Yeah, so they want to know, like, is this site worth visiting? Is this tour worth taking? Is this museum worth going to? Well, we did it for your mum, didn't we? Yeah, yeah. She's also a big Beatles fan. yeah. So basically, my mom and um, her boyfriend went there fairly recently. A couple of years rel- ago. Relatively it, yeah. speaking, yeah. And um, they were just like, they came to us to basically plan their itinerary right. for them because, yeah. um, they, yeah. you know, they, they if you're a Beatles fan, you know, like, all the main sites that there are to see. Or, or I mean... Sort of. Sort in th- of, in yeah. Theory, you, anyway. I mean, you know, there's um, the Cavern Club, surely. Well, yeah, yeah. That's a big site. Uh, um, but you don't know You don't know everything, or you might just not think about things. I mean, casual fans usually do the um, the Beatles Magical Mystery Tour, or the yeah. Magical History Tour, I think it's called. And it goes around in that bus that's done up mm-hmm. like the, the Beatles Magical Mystery Tour bus was in 1967. It's not the original bus. For those wondering, it's a it's a newer model. Uh, yeah. Um, but it's done all psychedelia and all that, you know, psychedelia and yeah. Psychedelic. I think there's several tours like that. I think there's a taxi tour also. The, oh, it's Liverpool. I mean, yeah. pretty much everyone. If you're not in the Beatles tour game, then so if you're into the Beatles but you don't want to go like sort of in depth into all these sites, then you can choose the, the taxi t- tour and the the magical history tour. Is, yeah, is, they're going to take yeah. you to all the main sites, you know, kind of do a Clark Griswold, let you out, like, let you look at it, snap a picture, and then get back on to, get back on to the And that's not to say they whatever. don't know what they're talking about either, you know, because no. the, the, the tour guides are quite knowledgeable. But, yeah. Um, yeah, it's not very in-depth because it keeps to a schedule. Yeah. And, you know, it's just like a couple of hours here because they want to get you around all the... Mm-hmm. You want to hit all the uh, the major points, yeah, and get you home, you know. So let's talk about our major, um, our major, <laughs> our itinerary. Yeah, the the main things that we would want. The go Dominic see. and Erica Beatles authorized itinerary. <laughs> yeah, yeah. For the hardcore Beatles nut mm-hmm. who wants to see things. Yeah. Um. First on my one is the National Trust tour. Now, not many hardcore fans seem to know, well, hard, hardcore fans that I thought were hardcore, not yeah. many seem to really know about this tour or seem to think that it's just like, oh, you just see the outside of their houses. Yeah. Or they think it's part of these other tours because these other of... tours take you to, okay, first of all, the yeah. National Trust Tour are John and Paul's Childhood child. homes, yeah. yeah. Childhood uh, Men- in quotation marks. Uh, Men Love Avenue, Men Dips, and 24th and Road. And those are the houses that they lived in... As teenagers. Yeah, when they were becoming the Beatles. Yeah, when they were the Beatles. Yeah. Because... When they'd left 
home for London mm-hmm. when they, when they were actually the Beatles. Yeah. yeah, that was the last house in Liverpool they lived in before yeah. they moved. Yeah. So I mean, obviously, some of their earlier homes are still there as well. Um, yeah, I think. I mean, everybody... but if you're not, unless you're a really really hardcore fan, you probably maybe don't care about those as much. Yeah, it's more interesting. There's not so much history there. There's not so much Beatles history. Yes. Yeah. Um. Yeah, so these are the two homes that John and Paul lived in. They would go to each other's houses and work on songs. It was just across together. a golf course, which is still there. Yeah. And um, the National Trust owns these houses, houses now. Yeah. Um, Yoko bought John's house. It, was pr- it wasn't owned by Mimi anymore because she died in 1991. And she wasn't. Mimi she... was John's aunt. Mimi, yeah, Mimi, <laughs> For anybody who doesn't know. Yeah. Mimi was John's aunt who owned the house. And when. when the Beatles became the Beatles. John bought her a house in Dorset and she moved there. And so that was sold to someone else and whoever lived there in the 60s, 70s and 80s. Yeah. And 90s, I guess, because I don't know when Yoko bought it. Yoko is John's second wife for anyone who mm-hmm. isn't unfamiliar with Yoko. Right. Um, And she bought it for the... And she, she, gave, she donated it to the National Trust. <laughs> yeah. If you... If, for those Beatles fans who know that reference. <laughs> um, and they did it up, you know, they restored it to how it would have looked when John lived there as a as a boy, the 1950s mm-hmm. d- decor, and they had a custodian there. They have a custodian there. Yeah. They, and they, they went, did the same with Paul's about I mean, a couple they years took, later. They took old photographs from inside the house, and they, like, they really painstakingly tried to find, like, the same types of furniture pieces. Not, obviously and not everything. the original furniture. Yeah. I mean, you know, you're I not mean, actually you imagine- sitting on John's bed. I mean, you never know. They might have lucked lucked out somewhere. Lucked out somewhere. They probably they would have they wouldn't have known, you know, but um but yeah, so they're not yeah, they're not the actual. Although when I went into John Lennon's house, you know, I did I did sit down on the bed <sighs> pretending that okay, this is where John Lennon's Slept, slept, you know. <laughs> so John Lennon's body's laying, you know. <laughs> yeah. But uh, no, the thing for me about John's house was, you know, looking out the window. Yeah. You know, and you look out the window and that's, the, I mean, obviously the road looks a slightly bit different and, you mm. know, the you know, houses may look a little bit different. The cars obviously do. But, you know, and we were thinking about it and I think your mum said it too. And when, when she was looking out the window, it's like, oh, his mother died just down the road. Yeah. And that, that kind of resonated he, he with could her have, a bit. Yeah, because yeah. she was just like, he could have seen it, you know, he had, he been, had he been home and in his room, he could have seen it happen from his bedroom. Yeah, he could have, yeah, he literally could have seen it happen from his yeah. bedroom because it was only down the road that his mother was killed in a car cra- um, a car accident in, oh, she was knocked down by a car in 1958, 59. I'm not too sure about yeah. the, the dates on that. Um, So yeah, that affected him for the rest of his life and everything so yeah that was like and it was just down the road from where because i think she'd just been to see because mimi was yeah. her sister yeah yeah anyway getting into the story there yeah. a little bit too much <laughs> and what i was going to say is yeah the, f- the thing for me was just looking out the window and you know seeing you know what he would have seen mm-hmm. you know and you know his inspiration of just looking around and you know what he would have thought and what he would think about it today really you know because i mean i know the beatles were a massive thing when he was alive and everything but he would be like, oh, the National Trust bought my old house. Because Paul still thinks it's a trip. Yeah. And the BBC, I think, or maybe it was ITV, when the National Trust bought his house, they did a little documentary on restoring it and everything, and people were going in, you know, the, they were going in thinking, oh, if we te- if we peel back the wallpaper, we're going to find some Beatle lyrics written on the wall. <laughs> That's what they were hoping for. And they peeled back something in Paul's bedroom, and it was like, some graffiti from whoever had lived there, you know, yeah. in the eighties or something, oh, yeah. you know. And it's like back then they didn't really, they might have known. Oh, this is Paul McCartney's old house, but they never really thought about it, you know. Yeah. Um. But yeah, that's it. That's another one they they redid and they had all the things, had all the mm-hmm. period furniture. Yeah. Even down to um, the armchair in Paul's living room that was like gnawed off or something wasn't it <laughs> I don't they had know. they had a they they had a picture of it yeah and i think that the custodian was like god oh, you know why paul's sitting like that or you know his legs over the 
the arm of the chair like mm-hmm. that. It's because the, the chair's arm was all, like, gnawed off or something, or ripped off or whatever. Yeah. And there was a piano, obviously, in the room, because Jim, his dad, played piano. And Mike McCartney, Paul's brother, mm-hmm. bought this piano at auction. Uh, no, Paul bought the the piano at auction, mm-hmm. thinking it was their old piano. Yeah. And he's and he he came to Mike with it, and he said, "Oh, you should give this to the National Trust, put it back in the house or whatever." Like, a, and he's like, "It's not our piano. What? <laughs> it's like it's not our piano, Paul. It's like what well, you've just paid this." <laughs> huge amount of money it's not our it never i know our piano it wasn't this one you know because it had whatever yeah and it was just so funny paul like shelling out all this money you know <laughs> at an auction to, to buy back this piano because he's very into buying back yeah stuff that has to do with him mm-hmm. um yeah but carrying yeah, on yeah. i went on i went on a bit there sorry yeah um also just as a like a little aside um recently on james i say recently you guys it's not it's not it's, like, it's, it wasn't it's like yesterday year. it was like a year, recently it's it's recent enough uh if you're recent familiar with the, the late show by james, i've been on the earth <laughs> if you're familiar with the late show by james corden yeah or late show with james corden he um does the carpool karaoke thing where he has celebrities in the car and he sings their songs and yeah. everything well he did one with paul mccartney which was a big score in liverpool itself mm-hmm and so he's driving around Liverpool, and they, you know, they went back to his old house. And he said he'd never been there in since he'd left in the sixties. But yeah. you know, everybody's like, "Yeah, that's not technically true." Well, I don't know if he'd been inside, but I don't know if he'd been inside. But a lot of people say he's he's been back and stuff, yeah. you know, and showing his kids, you know, Stella mm-hmm. McCartney, the fashion designer, and everything. So, if you want to see inside the house, if you you know, are not going to Liverpool anytime soon. <laughs> that is a, that's an episode to check out. Yes. Yeah. And I think you can find it on YouTube. So yeah. Yeah. Um, anyway, so the national trust has a tour, a combined tour. They're the only ones that you can see inside these houses with, and you have to yeah, look through they're the them. only ones. Yeah. And it's not so much. It's like, it's, I think it's like 25 quid. Oh, I can't remember the price. At all. They might have. They might have think, but th- there's opening times. There's times when they're in season. I think they're closed between. Dese- they're closed from like October to like March or something. It's on the website anyway. Uh, the National Trust dot org maybe or dot co dot uk. Um, uh, the Beatles tours and all the information is on that. Yeah. Um, and you have to book through them if you're interested. But that probably was my favorite. Thing that we did yeah. in Liverpool, um, I and it was something that's something that we definitely I we wanted to do because yeah. we were just like, oh, we've got to do this. Yeah. And, but it's funny, as I said before, people are like, oh, is it worth doing? And I'm like, you're a massive Beatles fan. <laughs> you're in love with John and Paul. Yeah, you've got to go. You've got to go and see this. It's such a great. Yeah, thing. you know, it's 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 so cool. Because my mom was a little bit worried that um, her boyfriend wasn't going to be that interested because he is a Beatles fan, but he's not. Quite quite as hardcore she she's as hardcore as dominic and myself but it's not died in the wool but yet. her but her boyfriend is not getting there. quite there yet yeah so she was afraid that he was just gonna be like okay yeah cool some old houses <laughs> you know but but i think cool he, old houses yeah, yeah but i think he enjoyed it as well and i mean we could probably make an entire podcast just talking about the this tour but um, yeah we better we better move on to the next i think we point. have actually at some point maybe we do <laughs> Um, the next, uh, the, the next flashpoint on the Beatles sites is the Cavern Club. Oh yeah, that's now, a, that's a that's a must. That's obviously. a must. That's yeah. a must. Obviously, the Beatles played there two hundred and sixty three times. It's the birthplace of the Beatles. Mm-hmm. It's where everybody you know the, where they got famous, where they were on stage and they first heard yeah. that you know please please me it went to number one or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, and of course, they had like a lot of fans you know, really get into them there. Now, I have to, we have to say it's not the original cavern. It's not in the original spot. Mostly. Mostly. Some of it is. It's Some of it is, but some of it isn't. It's not, you know, because a lot of people find, you know, who were there, because we've got a, a couple of people on f- Facebook who were... Who used to, you know, went to Liverpool in the uh-huh. '60s and went to the original cavern. Right, and this right. one is not nothing like it was before, yeah. and it's not because I mean they've got to, 
have health and safety and stuff that yeah. you know they've got to like do but supposedly it out. it's pretty close it's pretty close yeah so the cavern club obviously um is underground Se- yeah. several it's on matthew street several in Liverpool. floors underground i can't remember sure. how many i think it's about three like, or flights four, of stairs three or four flights of stairs yeah um and what happened is you know after it's the popularity started going down you know after the after the 60s i think in the 80s sometime they decided to fill in it se- in in the 70s they closed it yeah the, in the like mid 70s they closed it and liverpool town council uh flattened the buildings on top mm-hmm. you know the whole cellar bit was filled in mm-hmm. and they made a car park on top of it the parking lot i guess in the 90s or something they suddenly realized oh wait a minute somebody that's, was that's like a big, that's a big his- historical site that we yeah. just paved over there <laughs> yeah um, and you know, tourists are coming and they want to know where the Beatles played in the cavern. And we have to say, Oh, it's where that parking lot is now, you know? Yeah. And it's kind of like, so it's under there. <laughs> yeah. So they've, they've built Matthew street back up again. Now it's got like shops and the grapes is still there. Other pubs and, the pubs and stuff are still there. Bars. And I think, I think there's some clubs too. Yeah, yeah. There's some clubs. Yeah. And so they built it back up and they like, like where Cavern Walks is, that's the underground, that little shopping centre yeah. just off Matthew Street. Mm-hmm. That's apparently where the real cavern was. Where the actual stage used to be, yeah. Yeah, where the actual stage used to be. I think they've got even a little plaque or mm-hmm. something yeah. on the floor. So that's that's pretty cool. But the, the, the actual cavern club has been moved up a bit further up Matthew just Street. Just a little bit, because if when you go there, they do still have on the wall, this is where the actual door, door was, was that goes down. Down into the cavern club, yeah. yeah. The, original the original door. entrance, yeah. Which I think is now, it's an exit. It's like a fire exit, I, I think. I, I think it's a fire exit, or is it like right next to like next? It's like a store? I, I'm not sure, but I think it is a fire exit to the, now the new cavern club, which is on, I think, something like, it's on like... Something like 70% of the original 70 side. or 80% it is, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, it's it's close. Y- you know, you can Paul's can't... played there, anyway. Yeah. Several acts have played there. Uh, yeah, a lot of modern... Yeah, a lot of modern acts want to go and play there. Oasis, you know, just Blur, so they can everyone, say... you know, just so they yeah. can say, oh, we played the Cavern Club, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. Um, I think Ed Sheeran. Ed Sheeran, you know, yeah. you know all the Today stars. So it's it's still a big music venue, you know. Yeah, yeah. And it always will be. And Paul, yeah, and like you said, Paul's played there a couple Paul's times. There, so. Yeah. so the Beatles, you know, maybe not, but Paul, yes. <laughs> the Beatles played in Cavern Walks, yeah. <laughs> which yeah. is a shopping center. Yeah, you know, but yeah. So then, like across the street from the Cavern is the Grapes Pub. Yeah. And that's another site that we recommend if you're a Beatles rec- fan. If you're a hardcore Beatles fan, because that's where the Beatles used to go to have a drink after they played at the Cavern. Mm-hmm. And they they get together there. And yeah. there's a famous photo of them, and there's a booth that they sat in. This is when they played with Pete Best, and Pete Best was their original drummer before Ringo yeah. um, joined in 1962. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's a photo of them with Pete Best yeah. in, f- from The Grapes. Uh-huh. And they've redone it, apparently. They closed it for a while, yeah. just after we'd been mm-hmm. been there, and they closed it, and then they redid the interior. But they had the original booth and everything there. And they serve and, food, but if you, look at the, yeah, you, if you look at the reviews online, I think people are not that impressed with the food. So just go there for, get a drink. Well, you weren't and, like, impressed with the food. You didn't, well, you don't really like bangers and mash, no, do you? No, I ordered bangers and mash, and then I was like, you know what, I don't like bangers and mash. <laughs> I don't like English sausage. I she doesn't like English sausage. No, I'm not a fan. Not a not fan. Not a big fan of English sausage. So. No, I didn't like it. Um... <laughs> I, I liked, uh, I like that. No, I thought it was good anyway. But yeah, you go there to have a drink. And when we went there, Alan Williams was there and Sam Leach, both of whom were still alive at the yeah. time. <laughs> so we won't go into exactly who they are. But if you're a Beatles fan, you know, they're, they're Beatle people. <laughs> Sam Leach was the Beatles promoter in Liverpool in the early days. Yeah. Alan Williams was their first manager. manager. Yeah, yeah. Before Brian Epstein. Before Brian Epstein. Yeah. Um... So that booth is really cool. I think that's the only thing that they haven't, like, renovated. And they used to have a picture of the Beatles sitting in that booth. It was, like, the booth that the Beatles always sat in, apparently. Yeah. Um, so that's cool. Sit in the booth. Sit where, you know, your favorite Beatle is sitting and have your own picture taken there. 
That's what I did anyway. Yeah, yeah, we did that, you know. We <laughs> Have sat, a drink and, you know. I remember once, the second time we went to the Grapes, because the first time we we lucked out, we got we went in there and there was no one in there and the, the booth was, was free, so we went and sat in there and we had food and we yeah. had a drink and we just were like, oh yeah, this is great. Second time we went in there, it was around lunchtime and there was a there was like a couple of people sitting there and we're like, oh, someone's got the booth. Yeah. And so we went and sat over there and we were drinking and then they left and we just moved and went into the <laughs> booth and just, before anybody got it, you know. Yeah. Yeah, there's not like, it's not like packed with tourists, surprisingly. Surprisingly. Well, it, it, it the, we came in one day then to eat. And we came in again after that and Sam Leach was sitting there. Yeah. And he was promoting a book or something. And so he, he got the booth. But then so people coming in, there were like German tourists. I remember this German tourist came in and said, where is Tony Sheridan? Where is Tony Sheridan? <laughs> oh, to Sam Leach. To Sam Leach. And yeah. Sam Leach said, oh, yeah, he's in Hamburg, you know. <laughs> it's just like, and um, it was just like, yeah, you know. So, like, so he came in, he was like, where is Tony Sheridan? He was just like, he was just... Dominic's just like gone back to that moment in his mind. It was really funny <laughs> because he just comes in and he just goes, where is Tony Sheridan? Like that to him. Like, you know, like he was really like giving him like, you know, where is he? I need to see him now. He's like, oh, he's What have you Hamburg. done with him? <laughs> he's in Hamburg, you know. Tony Sheridan recorded with the, the Beatles in Hamburg. Gave My them bar- their first recording so, opportunity like first professional recording well he, anyway. he was their lead singer the, the beatles backed him on um uh my bonnie a version of my bonnie yeah which, really, which went huge over there <laughs> it, it went huge over there but it didn't really do anything in in the uk yeah except on an import single you know yeah so yeah um so the next point on the list you might recognize from the song's that are titled after yeah. these places. Um, Strawberry Fields and Penny Lane. Strawberry Field now, that's yeah. right around the corner, literally, mm-hmm. at Beaconsfield Road from Menlove Avenue. Yeah. And it used to be an, um, I was going to say a National Trust, a Salvation Army home. They knocked it down, and I think they've redone it now. I think it is. I think it's now a, a, a strawberry field. It's like a. It's a museum. It's a center. I don't know, but I'm sure I just read something fairly recently. See, there's that recently word again. Um, that they have opened. They're going to open it up for Beatles fans. Yeah, no, I it's, it's going to be like gonna a. Be. It's going to be like a center because origin. The, the 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 Salvation Army home. It was like an orphanage. For kids and John used to go there and it had like expansive grounds. It was like a, a Georgian or Victorian house. Yeah. And um <clears throat> climb over the gate. You climb he, over he the gate the and play there as a kid. Yeah. And they used to have like summer fates there and everything. And you the know? and the gate used to was, was the only a, thing that you could actually see. Like yeah, see to take a picture and then on either side of the gate, you know, are these um brick pillars yeah. and with 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 the original the word stro- strawberry field, and of course yeah. they've been graffitied over by people, you yeah, know, writing "I love you, John," Beatles, whatever, you know. So, so. But now the gates are going to be open, I guess. I the gates are going to be open. They've restored them, yeah. and I think they've put in in the wall next to it like a little thing that so you, people don't have to like open the gates. You know, you can just go around. Them oh yeah, <laughs> that in. way you can still take your picture. In yeah, front because of the I gates. think they knocked yeah. down the original house that was in there. And they've rebuilt it or something. I'm not sure. I mean, people in Liverpool will know. You know so, <laughs> um, and then Penny Lane is. It's an area of Liverpool. Yeah. It's a general area of Liverpool. There, well, there is an actual Penny Lane lane. Yeah, yeah. There's an actual Penny Lane Road yeah. lane, mm-hmm. so you can get your photo with the, the thing. But the the whole the stuff they name check in the song, the barber, the roundabout. The roundabout yeah. It's there. But, and, you know, it's kind of been beat, and they're saying, oh, this is what he's talking about. It's just, but it's like a district in Liverpool. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. The, I don't know if it's worth, if, to me, it's not necessarily worth bothering to see. because I mean, you can like, get off there, and you can, you can, you're not going to see a pretty nurse selling poppies in the <laughs> Um, You know, the barber, you know. It's fun the, to get your picture the fireman, by the... The fireman rushing in. It's fun to get your picture by the Penny Lane yeah. sign, though. <laughs> yeah, get your picture by the Penny City of Liverpool, Penny Lane. And then know. again, with the James Corden episode, um, they stopped there and Paul signed one of the signs, but 
They've put plastic over it. It's had moisture get behind it. It's like it's been a big fiasco. It's been a big fiasco because people were like... They went, you know, they were trying to Paul preserve did, cause, it. Because what happened is, you know, they filmed it and Paul said, oh, I'm going to sign it, Paul McCartney. And they'll never believe, they'll never yeah. believe it, you know. <laughs> and then when that, when that episode aired. Yeah. Then everybody. Everybody <laughs> rushed to try and like, I guess, chip the, because pe- people are, are just crazy. They went to rush and chip the whole thing out or something, steal it. And people were like, no, we've got to lacquer over it. We've got to you know, preserve it as much as we can, you know, before, and but people were trying to, like, write over it, or, you know, mm. it was kind of, like, too late for anyone to do anything about, you know, yeah. really. But, yeah. So, yeah, there was that thing, you know, he went and hit all the old haunts, really. Yeah. Um, the Casbah Club is the another... The Casbah Club, yeah. Yeah, it's sort of around the Matthew Street area No, it's ish. not. No? No. No, it's not. Yeah, I can't remember exactly <laughs> It's in Heyman's it Green, which is in West Derby, which is... Oh, the Casbah! I yeah. was thinking of, um... What's the one that we went to that wasn't open? <laughs> um, the Blue Angel? No. Oh, the Jacaranda. The Jacaranda. That's the what I was thinking. <laughs> the Casbah um, Club, yeah. It's way out. The so. Casbah Club, yeah. The Casbah Club is... We haven't made it there yet. <laughs> That's another shrine to Beatle history because that's uh was owned by Pete Best, who I said before was their original drummer. Mm-hmm. It's owned by the Best family still. Um, it was a club opened by their mother, Mona, uh, for like you know beat combos and everything like that. You know, it was like a coffee club mm-hmm. because every, in it like, was actually in their house. It was at their house, yeah. <laughs> but, but I mean, she she won it the, the ba- pool. it was the basement of their house, something right? like that. Yeah, it was. It had like twelve bedrooms or something. Yeah, the house was huge. Yeah, so she bought it with like her her winnings on like the horses. She bet everything on a horse and bought this house, and decided I'm going to go into business as this club owner. Because the the London coffee scene is really hip and trendy. The you know the coffee you know all the beatniks were going there. And mm-hmm. She's like, I want that up in Liverpool, and that's where the, the you know the Beatles would end up. You know, yeah, and you know that's where they found Pete Best, and and you know as as the the rest as they say is history, which yeah. is which was all played out down there. So that looks like a really really cool place to visit. Um, as I said, we have not made it to that site though because it is It's quite far out. Yeah. It's you know, it's it's a couple of miles out from the city centre. Yeah. yeah. It, it takes a couple of you know, you have to like get up. Bu- yeah, the bus is a bit you have to change. Yeah, because we, when we were looking not... at you know, I can understand how yeah. it must have been a bit of a an annoyance for Pete to yeah. get to gigs because they you know, the Beatles all kind of lived around each other. Mm-hmm. really in well may, maybe not george but you know still they could kind of get to each other quite easily um but yeah that's de- that looks like it's definitely worth a visit they've i think that um pete's brother owns it still doesn't yeah he? yeah rogue yeah, yeah. He owns it. So and, they, and the he's family also got, operates it and yeah he's yeah. also got another little location now um in matthew street the beatles mm-hmm. The, the Magical History Tour, or the Magical Mystery Museum, yeah. I think it's called. Magical yeah. History Museum. Magical History Museum, yeah. which um, has Beatles memorabilia from across their career, mm-hmm. actual authentic stuff, and of course stuff from Pete's private collection, which he had lying around the house, and he was like, yeah, you need to do something with this. Yeah, because, you know, yeah so that might be worth a visit. Um, that was actually has been open since the last time we were in Liverpool. So we haven't been there. Um, the Beatles museum that we did go to was out very near to the hotel that we stayed in the, at. In the Albert first, Dock, the, the Beatles first, story. Yeah. yeah. The first time we stayed in Liverpool and that was the Beatles story. And yeah. for a beginner Beatles fan, that's really good. Because it tells the story. It tells the story. You <laughs> yeah. go through and it tells the story. It's yeah. like... Um, a Titanic museum, you know, it tells the story as you know mm-hmm. as it progresses and everything. Yeah, I would definitely say that too. if you are just a passing fan, like you just you know the hits and you've got a mild interest, that's definitely probably the first place you should visit actually yeah. in Liverpool, yeah. and then it'll get you more excited about seeing the rest of the of the sites. The rest yeah. Of the sites. yeah, yeah. Um, but I don't know as far as how that compares to the his the magical history museum. We can't really. We say can't really because say we because we there. haven't been there. We've heard good things. We've though. heard very good things, yeah. and you know, we've what from what we've seen, it's like some when we go back to Liverpool, we'll definitely go there. It sounds a bit more in depth. It, yeah. So I don't think that that is a place for a passing Beatles fan. 
it's a little bit in depth, and it's also got the bias towards Pete because it's got Pete stuff. So it's like delving into really like the the very the early, early years. Yeah. years. Yeah, yeah. So like a a passing Beatles fan is only going to know John, Paul, George, and Ringo, the, you know, mm. the famous Beatles, you yeah, know, and, and all the hits and everything, you know. Yeah. And doesn't really know the backstory, shall we say? Um, and then as far as well, Dominic mentioned George and Ringo's houses. Yeah. Before, mm. um, they are not. They're owned privately. By the Na- they're privately yeah. owned. Yeah. They're not owned by the National Trust because someone still lives in them. <laughs> well, yeah, I don't but know you about could... Ringo's house actually. If oh, someone lives I don't know there what they do- what they're doing with that. I think that's become like a filming location. They now. were gonna fix it up. Ringo's house was in an an area. Of of town that basically I, I guess they were just we have not been out there by the, the dingle way. Yeah. yeah um so we have not been been to the area of town where ringo's house was and again these are the houses that they lived in um oh actually george's is not anyway um yeah. <laughs> ringo's house was um like falling down it was in an area of town well, that they the, were just the letting run was, down the yeah. whole street was pretty much abandoned and yeah. they were going to tear it down because you know, they want to keep the city looking nice and everything. Well, everybody petitioned to, yeah, to keep I, it. Yeah, there was a lot of, like, p- um, fan pressure to keep it going. And as such, it was... The, the, the streets were used as, like, um, filming locations for stuff... For period dramas. Mm-hmm. Like, stuff that was set in the 1960s. Stuff that's set in the 40s, even. And, of course, Peaky Blinders. Yeah. That was a major area that they've they filmed in and i think they've done them up now they're doing them up to be like exterior houses to look for peer for period, period classics yeah, yeah you know for like peaky blinders and stuff you know yeah so that's cool um so yeah that, that's whether, the way yeah that's, whether you'll ever be able to see inside though yeah and i mean it's not going to look like anything like ringo's house did anyway because i think it's completely been gutted and yeah so i'm not sure um george's teenage home is owned by um, is owned privately. You can't so really privately, see in an, it unless you. It's book an Upton a, Green out by Speak out by the airport. Yeah. So yeah, you have to book a specific tour in Liverpool to, in order to see yeah. inside that house because it is privately owned. But the ha- the house he was born in. You can go if, and yeah. If you've ever seen the Beatles anthology, he said he he says I was born at you know uh, twelve Arnold Grove. Yeah. And that is um, a house that you can go see. Someone does live in there, so, you know, be respectful, obviously. But you can just come right up to it and see the outside, yeah. take a picture of it. And if you're a big George Harrison fan, definitely recommend that. It's a really cute little house in, like, sort of, um, I don't know, do you call it a cul-de-sac in Britain? Yeah, I mean, it was, it's, it's a Like a dead-end yeah. street. It's a, a dead-end <laughs> street, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then the last thing on our list, again, is, like... You know, for the kind more, of, yeah, the more people, who, yeah, the more hardcore Beatles it's, fans. It's Liper, the uh, Liverpool Institute of Performing Arts, mm-hmm. uh, which Paul McCartney himself is a patron, and it's Paul McCartney's old school. It used to be the the old Liverpool Grammar School, the mm-hmm. Liverpool Institute. Yeah, and people Where like Paul and Paul George and went. George went. Yeah, mm-hmm. and a host of other people. I don't know if you remember, um, if for people in the UK remember the newsreader Peter C- Peter Sissons. He went there too, and Neil Aspinall, who was their roadie, went there too, and that's how they all kind of like knew each other yeah. and stuff. So, if you know Beatles history at all, you know that John and um, George's school was right next door to the art college Which, that John went to. Yeah, and they would um, go in there at lunchtime. And lunchtime. They'd all like work on their songs together. Work on and songs, stuff. sing songs, play guitar. You know, sing the old, old Buddy Holly numbers and. And so John's art college has now been um, enveloped by Lipa as well. Yeah, they the bought the buildings. Yeah, yeah, so it's like it's, it's all part of the campus. It's part yeah. of the campus. Mm-hmm. So if you're if you're a big if you're big on that part of hit their you can history, go see it, yeah. yeah, you can go see that they're still standing. It's just called Lipa now. Yeah. Um, but I, to me, that was cool too. Going around yeah, and Lipa, seeing that. Lipa, yeah, yeah. Um, one more thing, though, really quickly before we have to go, and we are out of time, but... Um, We're out of time. We don't have it. We no don't more have time. it on the list, obviously. Um, and we didn't make it there, either. We have no, we have yet to make it there. But the church, that where St. John Peter's and Paul church, met. St. Peter's Church, where John and Paul met, which is, again, around the, around the corner from Strawberry Fields. 
and we didn't make it there for some yeah. whatever reason. It's a yeah. wet. It's a little. The only bit time we've saw labor. we've seen strawberry fields is in the dark. I think. Yeah. We? Yeah. I think. Yeah. I think we just went there once. We too. only went there once. Yeah, for some reason. Yeah. We need to go back and do a tour. Yeah, we do. And you can come with us. <laughs> Maybe we'll make a YouTube video out of it. Well, definitely. I think. I think that's definitely what we're gonna do. Yeah. So, um, anyway, we hope you found this interesting or possibly useful yes. if you have a Liverpool trip in your future. Yes. Um, if you did, please share it with your Beatley friends or anybody you know that might be remotely interested in Beatle sites in Liverpool or just Liverpool in general. Because, like I said, you don't have to be into the Beatles to, like, find these things interesting if you're just into history in general. Um... And yeah, I think that's gonna I think do that's it. it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Obviously, there's a ton more Beatles sites in Liverpool. Yeah. Um, but these are just the ones that we consider to be the main ones you need to see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um. Oh, we didn't mention the big new statues that they have. Too. Well, on the waterfront, yeah. There's yeah. on on the on the well, around the pier. Yeah. Larger than life. Near to the the the. The Mersey Ferry um, entrance. Yeah. So to get on the ferry. So we haven't seen those. <laughs> we haven't seen those either. They just put them up in the last but couple But they're of absolutely years, so. gorgeous. So we definitely think those are probably a must if you're a Beatles fan. Yeah. You can get your picture with them. Um, but yeah, thank you as always for listening. If you enjoyed this or if you just enjoy our podcast, if you find them interesting at all, informational, funny, whatever, um, please give us a rating on iTunes. Or wherever you're listening, if if you can do it on Spotify, I'm not sure. But um, wherever you can give us a rating, we really appreciate you leaving us a rating, a review. It helps other people find our podcast so that we can yeah. grow our audience. And um, yeah. And we can continue talking to you. Yeah. Because <laughs> we... we know you want to hear us. <laughs> well, we hope anyway. We know it. You love it. <laughs> but thanks for listening. We appreciate you as always. And we'll talk to you next time. Bye. <laughs>